Hi everyone. In this uh, video, I'm going to talk about the anatomy of a good reflection. What makes something a really good reflection? But before that, let's very quickly see why this reflection is super important. We'll see two points as to why reflection is super important. Point number one, Deep Thought did an experiment four years back. In 2020, Deep Thought did an experiment. What we did is we gave this Jim Collins video, about a 55-minute video, to a lot of applicants. And uh, we asked them to watch it. And we asked uh, 10 questions based on the video. So all the questions were based on the video, open internet exam, and more than 90% of the participants, I repeat, more than 90% of the participants received two on 10 or less. Now, what this experiment helped us understand is most participants have selective attention, something called selective attention. That is when we listen to a thought leader or when we read a book, when we listen to a thought leader or when we read a book, we tend to listen to only those aspects that we agree with. We tend to listen to only those aspects that we agree with. Now, that can be dangerous, right? It is like if your mind is like a bucket which is trying to capture water, if knowledge is water and if your mind is like a bucket which is trying to capture water and if there are a lot of holes due to selective attention, if there are a lot of holes around the bucket, isn't that problematic? Because while you're trying to attend more classes, read more books, trying to pour more water, but the water is all going out due to selective attention because the mind is only paying attention to what it is interested in. So there's a need to overcome that self, uh, you know, that selective attention. There are various ways. A deep thought is something called thread building, eagle building, which in case we hire you, you probably get exposed to that. But for now, we're only exposing you to reflection. We're trying to see if you can write a good reflection. So this is my point number one, because it makes learning effective. Because sometimes when I talk to some candidates, I tell them that in that meeting, I explained this. Didn't you take notes? Didn't you understand? They say that, Tarun, I could not uh, revise. Um, I think when you're discussing products, uh, you have a lot of brainstorming sessions where everybody brings in ideas. Uh, some of those uh, ideas which come in are not just ideas, they're frameworks. They, you know, Sometimes your teammates expose you to new theories that could be useful in the product. Now, you don't always get a chance to revise because these are important theories and, and there's so many theories in the world, right? So uh, being able to reflect is important because if you can reflect, you internalize ideas. If you can reflect, you internalize ideas. So you'll start implementing the ideas when the time is right. So this is, I think it, it helps us overcome selective attention and learn faster because in a product-oriented setup, I think uh, learning is super important. And point number two is uh, there is definite, there are definitely a lot of emotional weaknesses in all of us. Sometimes out of disappointment or out of, uh, anger or jealousy, we don't speak in a polite way, we tend to hurt people. Or sometimes, you know, someone can scam you and you get scammed because of your greed. You're very greedy that I want this and so on. So being able to regulate that emotion and not being greedy uh, is uh, important. Or sometimes you're too scared because you're scared, you don't think freely. Or sometimes you're overconfident and due to that, again, you don't think freely. So reflection is super important because reflection helps you step back, analyze how the incidents have unfolded and, and think of how you would like to face them. So I think the more you practice reflection, both on the emotional front and the intellectual front, both on the emotional front as well as intellectual front, you'll start seeing progress. So I hope I've established the why of a reflection very clearly. Now I would like to go into the how. So We've already shared a detailed document around uh, how to write a good reflection. So let me just quickly take you through this. So even if you can't go through the entire document, that's fine because you get only a 24 hour timeline. So you can just skim through it. So first is if you just give a recall, right? There's a reflection and a recall. Recall means like a parrot, you're repeating what the person said in the video. So if it's a recall, you get only 0.25 points per concept. So we look at in round one, can you tell us at least two concepts? And round two, each video, can you tell us at least four concepts? So if you're only doing a recall per concept, you get 0.25 points. If you are able to give an example where you take the concept and you're able to think of an example, right? A situation where the concept applies. For example, let's say it's not in the video, but I'm giving a different example. Let's say your example is cognitive dissonance. Cognitive dissonance is you tell people something that they don't believe in. They will not listen to you. It's a psychology concept. So if it's against your belief system, you don't take something that is told to you. So now when I tell cognitive dissonance, uh, 
One example of it could be feedback. Students usually do not take feedback due to cognitive dissonance. Or one other example you'll see here is uh, cigarette smokers. You tell them that smoking is injurious to health. They may not take it because of cognitive dissonance. It's a going opposite to what they believe in. So these are examples. So when you write a concept, you can also think of new examples and write examples. And then there's argumentation. So argumentation as in you put a series of reasons, like a, how a lawyer would write, put a series of reasons through which you explain the concept and why that concept is, I mean, whatever is the idea in the concept. I'll give you an example below. Okay. So when we mark any concept, we are looking at, are you giving examples and are you giving argumentation? So for each concept, if there's example and argumentation, you get one point per concept. And for round one, the 10 introspection questions, which we gave round one, if you're able to give us two concepts, bingo, done. And round two, per video, we expect minimum four concepts with example and argumentation. And we expect the concept to be non-trivial and nuanced, non-trivial and nuanced. What is non-trivial? What is nuanced? We'll see that in a while. And only if you are, uh, if it's not a recall, but it's a deeper understanding, you get points for it. It's a critical evaluation, right? So this is how we are marking things. Now, why a reflection is important. I already told you, you can read through this. It's really nice stuff, which can change your life. How to write a reflection. I think take proper notes. We already told you that while watching the video, take proper notes. So in that notes, you try to write examples for the concepts. So if you are able to write multiple examples, you know, it's not a headline. It is a concept. Then you can check. Is it a headline or is it an insight? Is it something which is getting your attention or is it something which is really insightful? Is it your personal opinion or is it a concept? A lot of times people give personal opinion. We don't want that. Are you trying to flatter the organization or are you quoting facts? We're not interested in flattery. See, adding butter and telling the organization you're very good, you're very good while you internally hate the organization is not good for your self-esteem, not good for the organization also. We don't want you to flatter us. You don't like something at the end of the selection process, you can tell us we're happy to take feedback and improve. Okay. I'm, I'm serious. We're happy to take feedback and improve. So need not flatter us. Just focus on your learning. We'll be very happy. Even if you don't join us, you're getting some good learning out of the reflection. We'll be very happy for you because we as an organization exist to help youngsters, right? So you're good. You like what we do. You write a good reflection. You join us. Wow. That's nice. But you're good or you're not good, doesn't matter. You're able to use the reflection, develop yourself, we're happy. Although, of course, we'll be more happy if we're able to have some good people join us. Uh, but either ways, right? You're able, you're able to write a good reflection, fantastic. Now, expectations, reasoning. Like here you can see an example, right? So let's say there's a video where Elon Musk talks of first principles reasoning. Most average Indian students will only write, Elon Musk says you should do first principles reasoning. But if you can see here, there's a detailed breakdown. First, Elon Musk says there are two ways of thinking, analogy and first principles. Second, what is analogy? Using existing things and comparisons to do something. What is first principles reasoning? You go to the fundamental truths and from there you start reasoning what it is. Why analogies are important? Because you can't go through daily life without analogies. There are two ways, analogy and first principle. Analogy is important, otherwise our brain will shut down. But what is the problem with analogical thinking? You will be limited to what is already there, right? You see the step-by-step -step lawyer kind of argumentation. Then electrical battery example, people who think through analogy say that electrical batteries are expensive. But if you use first principles reasoning, you see that the parts of a battery are not expensive, but the battery is expensive. So you think of how can I recombine the parts? How can I put the parts in a different way so that my battery is not expensive? You get it, right? Thinking through analogy is you just follow what everybody tells. Somebody tells that battery is expensive and you follow that electrical batteries are expensive. But what is thinking through first principles? You go to the fundamental truth and you start thinking from the fundamental truth. So then you say that, you know, even though the parts are not expensive, the battery is expensive. Why? You ask this question. And when you ask this question, you then get an understanding that, okay, even though uh, the parts are uh, not expensive, the battery is expensive because the way you combine the parts is the expensive process. So if you can find a process which is not expensive, a process to combine the parts, then battery will no longer be expensive. So this is the first principles thought process. So towards the end, you see that, okay, you can innovate batteries by using first principles reasoning. So now this is reasoning, right? So for every concept, you can give a reasoning. And um, for a concept, you can give three examples or at least one example that will help us understand that you see it as a concept. Then what is non-trivial? Trivial means you tell me that it's important to learn. It's important to work hard. That's more like a motivational line. That's something everybody knows. 
it's not something new that you've told us right so non trivial means something new that you're really telling us next nuanced concepts nuance as in you go into more subtlety more intricate uh, stuff the complexity of it so again we we're, we're looking at the nuances because i think um look when you look at new projects the nuances matter a lot execution is always in nuance so the difference between an amateur and an experienced professional is the experienced professional understands the nuances of it so being able to get those nuances is key to execution right being able to do it and not being able to do one key thing is nuance so we want to see if you are able to capture the nuance or not next up uh, so and we do a critical evaluation so here there are there's a good example and bad example of a reflection you can see through that and we've also given a link here right at the beginning you will see one link which takes you through this other document in case you want to so as you can see here if you don't want to have a look that's perfectly fine because i'm anyway giving you a cursory glance of it so you see this reflection the person is just saying that he, he, the person is just giving more of recall and there are not enough concepts so the reflection got only a 5 on 10 um, probably this was a very liberal scoring i would have given it a 2 on 10 so because you don't have examples you don't have argumentation and you don't have four concepts per video you don't have maybe two concepts you have it for round one but four concepts per video you don't have it here next you look at uh, this example so you see uh, this is based on the jim collins video and hari haran anand's video so section 1 uh, technical domain specific questions uh, give some concepts problem solving with incomplete data practical data analysis how to do it uh, then there's this personality questions collaborative teamwork embracing feedback uh, so there are concepts and examples for each concept and there's argumentation for each of them then from video starting with small and making incremental contributions right so then this also as an example right concept one there's this concept key how do you start small and make incremental contribution right so for that there's an example and within the example there's an argumentation of that you know there's a reasoning of why that was told so for each concept as you can see there's an example and argumentation so yeah it's okay if it goes this is probably 800 words it's okay if it's long but i think it's important to write down the example and write down the argumentation because if you're able to think of a new example of your own that means you truly understand it if you're able to think of a new example of your own you can truly understand here if you can see it's more of the person is quoting the example that mr hariharan anand gave but if you want to write your own example also you can write your own example that makes it even better and as you can see this argumentation why this is a why this concept is used right for example uh, it import this says that no matter how small you can slowly make progress so this argumentation tells why this concept is important if i were to write an argumentation what i would say is a lot of people procrastinate and don't go forward because they feel that they can't do anything anyway but if you're able to make small contributions and go forward that helps you progress in tech because for a beginner technology appears intimidating uh, technology appears very complex so for a beginner uh, even marketing for that matter any high value field right any high value field appears very intimidating to a beginner or an intern so but being able to tell that okay i'll do one small step at a time i think is super important now this is my argumentation right why this concept is important you can write that argumentation there so you can for each video four concepts and each concept you can write the example and argumentation right so this is what will make something a good reflection once again i would like to reemphasize key reflections are key because one it improves your learning curve you'll see yourself learning much faster even in your college whatever takes 3 hours of preparation you'll probably be able to finish it off with 1 hour of preparation if you're able to reflect really well and two as a person you'll start becoming more of a mahatma gandhi or a harsha bogle kind of a person always happy always smiling always able to carry more people together so don't you want to be that very welcoming individual whom people like to talk to whom people come to for advice so you can become a very evolved person if you're able to you know reflect it improves your personality it also improves your learning curve when you're learning new and complex concepts so this is why reflection is very important you've learned a new concept called nuance so because in school we're only taught how to by heart and write it as it is that's that's recall but i think it's going few levels above recall where you know we're talking of argumentation we're talking of examples we're talking of nuance right 
So examples, argumentation and nuance are super important. Nuance is super important because because of rote learning, many students tend to just give headlines. When they watch a video also, students tend to go more with headlines than to go with the underlying malai. You know, you drink the milk and leave the malai. Not good, right? So how to get that core concept out of it, I think is super important. So reflection, trust me, you write a good reflection, you'll see a huge difference mm -hmm. in yourself. And whether you get hired by DT or not get hired by DT, I think if you can practice this reflection more often, it'll help you handle situations better. It'll also help you learn much faster uh, from uh, videos. Hope you found this super important and I wish you all the best.